from Greece. That's a bit of a weird intro, but we're gonna go with it. I am here in Greece to speak at Delphi Economic Forum, which um, is actually a massive and very prestigious event in Greece. They have kind of all of the all of the public officials go and speak there, and I was invited to speak on the Digital Disruption Sessions stage, where they're bringing speakers from overseas and from Greece to talk about different topics around kind of new media, social media, robotics, kind of tech for good. So it's been an amazing couple days here. I'm gonna insert in a couple little bits now from the Economic Forum. So forgive that it's a mess, but this is my really awesome and massive hotel room. I'm staying at the, what is it, NJV Plaza in Athens. It's right in the city center and it's pretty amazing. Um, the room is huge, although do you see that? This is pretty funny actually. There's like a big greasy handprint on the wall of the door, and it, on the back of the door, and it is not me. Definitely not my hands actually looks smaller than my hands um, but anyway so hey this is the bathroom super nice um, but yeah super nice great central place to stay in Athens and I have been super duper happy here yeah, so an amazing time um, and now I've got like three hours today to go and see a little bit of Athens before I have to go back to the airport so I am gonna get my butt outside it's like 70 degrees and coming from the frozen tundra that is London like we've literally had snow for a week I could not be happier to be here and I think I'm actually gonna have to ditch this blazer because I think it's gonna be too warm out oh my god first world problems but amazing I am so excited so let's go see the Acropolis and a few other bits of Athens. I made my way over to the Acropolis through the charming neighborhood of Plaka, which is actually situated under the Acropolis. Um, it's actually known as Neighborhood of the Gods, thanks to its close proximity to the Acropolis and other archaeological sites. I highly recommend a visit to this charming neighborhood either before or after your visit to the Acropolis. Wander the tiny streets, sit in a sidewalk cafe, do a bit of touristy shopping. It definitely has become more of a touristy neighborhood due to its proximity to the Acropolis, but I loved it and I loved kind of wandering the tiny streets, so I would highly recommend that. With a limited amount of time in Athens, my main destination for the day was the Acropolis, which is one of the most famous archeological sites in the world. It's now actually designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And interestingly, in Greek, Acropolis literally translates to highest, topmost, outermost. So be prepared that as you wander your way through the Plaka neighborhood, you are gonna have to climb some stairs and some hills to get up to the Acropolis. Pretty amazing, isn't it? 
Um, so I'm just at a scenic overlook point, just right next to the Acropolis right now. So I'm gonna go up there next, but honestly it's like 11.30, almost noon, and it just looks like hordes of people. So should be interesting, but I'm still gonna go see it. If you are planning a visit to the Acropolis, I highly recommend that you spend some time reading through this site's incredibly robust and interesting history. I am such a history buff and I really geek out when I travel going to historic sites and love to spend time reading about it. It's a lot to cover, so I'm not gonna go through all of it in depth in this video, but I am gonna give you a quick summary to get you started on kind of your, your reading homework. So what's exciting about the Acropolis is that it has actually been inhabited since prehistoric times. There's actually evidence that the Acropolis was in how basically not the Acropolis but like the hill itself was inhabited from the fourth millennium BC. However, it was Pericles in the fifth century BC who coordinated some of the most famous remains that you see today on the Acropolis. And this includes the Parthenon, the Propylia, the Erection, and the Temple of Athena Nike. I hope I am pronouncing these correctly. I did look up online how to pronounce them, but as I am not Greek by background, I apologize because I'm sure that I'm not pronouncing them completely correctly. So my experience of getting into the Acropolis was not the smoothest one. I had read all of the travel reviews online saying it gets really crowded in the middle of the day. And guess what I did? I went and visited it in the middle of the day on a Sunday. So I have no one to blame but myself that it was a long line and it wasn't the most pleasant of lines to have to wade into. It is what it is, you know, just learn from my mistakes, go earlier in the day if you can. So I did have to wait in a super long line and you know what, I still think it was worth the wait. I really loved my visit and you know, I guess just that wait made the um, <laughs> anticipation build up. So a couple little other tidbits. So as you enter the Acropolis, you pass through the gateway of the Propylia, which is, it gets you so excited to go in and see the rest of the site because it's that first kind of dramatic thing that you're going to see. So I really enjoyed that. And then once you kind of get in, you get your first view of the Parthenon, which is the temple dedicated to the goddess Athena after whom the city of Athens was named. So that's incredible. I will call it as well, as you'll see in this video footage, at the time of my visit, a lot of the Acropolis was under construction, which I guess could be perceived as disappointing, but it's part of a massive reconstruction project that is going to take some time. So do your research when you plan to visit, see what the current state of it is now. I think things like Instagram location tags are really helpful for that. Um, but I have to say it's still, even though there was some scaffolding and some building kind of works up, it, it still was a special visit. And I think because I'm so interested in history, I loved kind of wandering around. You really feel like you're stepping back in time and it's really wonderful to imagine what uh, the Acropolis and the many kind of buildings on site were like way back when. What's really special when you think about the history of the Acropolis is over centuries, it has played so many different roles. It's been home to kings, it's been a citadel, it's also been um, a, a mythical home to the gods, which is amazing. It's been a religious center and now it's a tourist attraction. It's also withstood kind of wars, conflicts, earthquakes, vandalism, it, there's so much that this site has lived through and it's still standing today. So if that's not impressive, I don't know what is. Now a few practical facts if you're gonna go visit. So again, take my advice seriously. This is one of the most amazing um, and visited tourist attractions in the world be prepared that it's going to be crowded. So as such, I would recommend you get up early, go early if you really wanna try and beat the crowds. I still ended up taking the most stunning pictures and having a wonderful experience despite the mobs of people. I did go before COVID-19, so I can't speak for what that experience is 
post COVID, but um, at least when I went, it was really crowded. But I would also recommend as well, wear sneakers. You do have to do a lot of kind of walking uphill, climbing steps, so be prepared for that. Um, and there is some uneven terrain as well, so just I would recommend sensible footwear. And I'd also recommend packing some bottled water because it does get really hot on the site, so having bottled water is essential. And last but certainly not least, I would also recommend a visit to the Acropolis Museum. I unfortunately had to skip this because my long wait in line and my flight that was later that afternoon meant that I just, I didn't have time to do it all. And I'm so sad because all of my friends who have visited the Acropolis Museum have said it is fantastic. So we're going to take their advice here and say that you should do that. And if I ever get a chance to return back to Athens, I am absolutely going to visit the museum as well. So guys, with that said, that concludes my quick video on Athens. I hope this gives you a first kind of look and taste of some beautiful things to see and do and a wonderful hotel to stay at should you visit Athens. If you like this content, please hit that like button and also leave a comment if you have any tips on visiting the Acropolis or other great sites or great restaurants to visit while you're in Athens. Sharing is caring here on this channel. And last but not least, please hit that subscribe button. I love seeing when people subscribe because it means that they're liking the video content that I'm creating and they want to see the next video that I have coming up. And I have so many good ones in queue that I am working on editing. So there's so many more great travel adventures to come. So thanks again for tuning in guys and I will see you soon.